Today I'm going to show you how to make these. Um, these are pretend 3D shapes in iDraw. I'm going to be showing you how to do gradients, both linear and radial versions. I'll show you some quick and easy ways to edit those gradients to get them exactly where you want them. We'll be looking at how to move pairs and nodes at the same time and lots more. So let's get drawing. Well, greetings guys, welcome to my iDraw tutorial part 3. Um, if you haven't checked out parts 1 and 2 yet, I suggest you do, because I'm not going to be covering how to use the tools that I used in those um, videos. Let's uh, draw ourselves out a little circle, and remember by adding a second finger after you've started drawing, that makes the circle a completely regular um, circle. And then I'm going to change the stroke to be transparent, which is this bottom right hand one. Uh, that has a kind of slash through it, and then I'm going to change the uh, color fill to a deep, deep red, like that. Now, so far we've only used um, completely plain um, fills, but there's another option there. If you look on the um, in the in in the at the top there, it says color fill and then gradient fill. If you hit that one on the uh, the right hand side, you can see you've got one of these. Uh, one of these things where the color slowly changes from one color um, to the other. If you've used other pro art programs, you're probably very familiar with what a gradient is. But if you haven't used it before, it's when 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 you get two colors in a shape, and rather than just going from red to green in a single line, it does so gradually. And um, if you look at what we've got here, um, you've got the two colors that it's been used. You've got the white dot over here, so this this gradient is white, and then you've got a black dot over here, so the the other side of it is black. And you can change either of these colors by tapping on them. So I could change uh, this to a green on one side um, to red in the other and you can see that updating there and you, you can drag these two blobs across and by doing so it changes the part um, where the, 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 the where one color starts to merge into the other and by doing this we can get some really really um, nice effects let me show you if I change it to black on one side and to again to that deep red on the other we can start to get more of a kind of a 3D look to our um, ball because it looks like there's light shining on one side of the um, of the object, and we can actually enhance this further because this is a circle. What will work, work even better than a, a linear gradient is a radial gradient because um, the gradient at the moment is kind of up down in a completely straight line. But if we switch to a radial gradient, you see we've got that circle shape. Um, like that. Now, if I tap off to get back to the main screen and go to my select tool, and when you just when you just tap on an object to select it, you get that normal one, which allows you to resize the object, which we've talked about before. But once it's selected, if you then tap again, if there is a gradient on it, you can then actually just move the gradient um, itself, and you can put that anywhere. Um, you want on the shape, and you can move both ends, and the length of it shows you how much, how far the the gradient will move um, over the object. So you can actually really start to get the the gradient effect, um, that 3D effect, working even more strongly on the ball. Now let's take that a step further by adding in a third gradient point. Now you can see um, underneath the color bar it says unvert and then you've got a plus and a minus or the other round, a minus and a plus. And if I press plus that gives us a third um, gradient point and again you can adjust these colors as you want. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap the red and the white over by just dragging one through the other. I'm going to put the white all the way up one side. I want to move the red a little bit across and actually I want to move the black a little bit across as well and look at that if you look at the the ball now that really looks like we've got a 3d ball um, with a um, a strong light on one side of it and we can make that effect um, even more um, pronounced by uh, putting a, a fill color in the background and uh, fill colors of course can be gradients as well and um, here's actually one I saved earlier that I'm gonna use it's kind of little gold colors because you can save colors and you can save gradients but let me just show you how you do that if you haven't seen how to save a gradient before or save a color before you um, you set up whatever colors you want in any, whatever um, combination you want so let's say that was the gradient I, I really really like and then you just Put your map, put your uh, stylus or finger on that main color, and just drag it across um, to one of those boxes, and that gradient is now saved. So I've got my little kind of gold gradient, and I'm going to put it like that. Now I'm going to copy the shape that I originally have um, to make. Oops, just once this time. Whoops. Uh, to uh, to make a shadow. So I'm just going to go copy, and then I'm going to go um, 
paste. So we've now got two of those. Now what I'm going to do with the second one is adjust the color, the transparency, and then we're going to play with the nodes. So I'm going to go back to the color um, so I did change it back to color fill and I'm going to turn it back to complete black and then bring it up to a medium gray but then we're going to give it some transparency we're using those two bottom ones there you can you can change the color but also change the transparency and by doing that you can create a really nice shadow effect and I just keep tweaking until you're happy with it so um as you can see at the moment though the shadow is on top of the ball which isn't what we want we want the shadow um behind the ball and you do that by going up to the top here where it says um arrange if you click on modify you might not see that so click arrange which is that top left button and we're just going to pull that all the way across to take it behind the shape we've got already and then by going to our um uh, shape tools or on node tools um, either, either one really will work for this particular one we can then kind of start to shape that um, to look like the shadow of the object that we were that we have been working with now the trick to working with uh, high highlights and shadows is to imagine which way the light is hitting your, the ball in which case that's coming from the top left slightly in front so then the shadow's got to be on the opposite the bottom right slightly behind and if I just start to move that way a bit you can see it's actually starting to look like quite a nice little 3D object now let's try the same thing with a square now a square is a bit trickier um, but we're gonna I'm gonna teach you some new stuff here using um, some of the um, the nodes um, so let's just grab grab ourselves a square shape let's change it to uh, let's keep our set uh, our radial fill and let's draw out a square there it is lovely and we're gonna move that uh, oh, apps gone free is now available. How exciting! We're going to move that uh, radial gradient up to the same location the other one was, and we need to add in the black, don't we? So plus, and then I'll swap that white, white and red over, and I'll change that white to a black. By the way, if I'm moving too fast at any point, um, then just pause the video and um, watch that section again. You can always see what I'm using by the color the tools go. Now I've got that. Uh, Radial gradient shown giving me the highlight on this, uh, but because this is a square, we need to start adding in other uh, sides to that as well. And then with a square, it actually makes it a little easier if you add on an outline. And I've done that by changing the stroke back to black. And after I've done that, I can go up here to the eye and I can change how thick I want that stroke to be. And um, I am actually going to leave that at one, but if you've got a really thick stroke, you might have a, um, a few problems. And then I'm going to copy it. Copy and paste. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the the node tool, which we saw um, in one of the previous tutorials. And if you remember, you can drag uh, nodes around by just kind of tapping. Once you've got the node tool activated, you can just drag them around like that. I'm just going to undo that to get it back where it was. Because one of the things that I find is quite helpful is selecting more than one node at a time. And you do that by clicking the... If you see at the bottom of the screen, once I've got the node tool selected, there's three options. Um, arrow, arrow plus. And if you have... If you put to arrow plus, once you've got a node selected, if you then hit another node, you then select those two nodes so at the moment I've got two blue nodes and two white nodes on that square can you see the two top ones are selected the two bottom ones aren't I'm then going to click back to this to the arrow so now I'm not adding the nodes I'm just back to moving them and now I can move those two nodes together um, by tapping on on one of them now this allows me to keep that square shape without losing uh, but still be able to kind of move them around by keeping by moving them in pairs now I'm going to do the same with the bottom one Okay, so I'm going to select bottom left node, change to the plus, bottom right node, change back to the move, and now I'm going to line it up um, with the uh, with the other um, side of it there. And then I'm going to do the same process again nice and quickly. I'm going to copy, I'm going to paste, going to move the object. I'm running out of room here. I might need to, might need to expand my canvas in a minute. Um, and then again, I'm going to go to the node tool, I'm going to select one node, going to select another node, going to select the move we'll try and line it up a little bit, we'll come back to do that later select one node, select the second node and we'll move it is now there is a skew tool in this uh, program which is something that will mathematically change the um, angles of shapes 
um, which will be a far more kind of, I, guess, I don't know if it's a accurate to the word, but a, a more logical way of, of doing this. But we're, we're, we can get into maths another day. But just for now, we're going for the uh, the kind of cheap and cheerful <laughs> um, look. Now, uh, so our cube's starting to look pretty good. We've got that light source hitting it where we need to. Uh, we can adjust the gradient at any point, remember, by double tapping on something and moving where the points of light are. Because remember that each shape would be hit at a slightly different point. Um, and then the the one on the right hand side, of course, would be in shadow. So actually, we're gonna we're not gonna make that one a radial one. We're just gonna make that one a color fill. Uh, sorry, not a gradient, I should say. Um, and we're gonna make that red. But then I'm just gonna pull down the darkness a little bit. So that's, if you see, I'll do that. I went completely um, strong red, and then I'm just pull down um, the brightness on that to give it the effect of. Um, being all in shadow and if I click off that now you can now see um, that shape is starting to look uh, pretty good. Last thing of course we need to do before we run out of time is to give that a shadow as well and let's give, give ourselves a little bit of room by grabbing the whole lot and moving them over and the shadow is done exactly the same way by grabbing that front piece copy, paste uh, and then we're going to send it to back like we did before um, then we're going to change it to uh, color fill, blackish, um, fairly reasonably transparent, and then go to the node tool and just start pulling around. Now, cube shadows, you need to kind of rem uh, it might be helpful for you to get a pic grab a picture of a, of a cube shadow off, off Google because um, because it's not quite a regular shape. Um, and oh, and of course, you need to turn off the we need to turn off the stroke by making that transparent, otherwise the shadow will look silly. Uh, right, I need to bring that up like that, and that across like that. Oh, and I need to bring that under there. Okay, so despite this not being a 3D program, you can still get some very nice um, 3D effects out of things, but they're just a little bit of uh, a little bit of imagination and. Uh, uh, putting in things like radiance and highlights and shadows and and, and all sorts like that and of course uh, the beauty of it, of it being a uh, a vector program rather than a uh, rather than a uh, like a just a normal kind of painting program is that we can just go back in and edit anything at any point until we're happy with it. you want something brighter we could just do it with a, a quick click we want to change a shape you do it with a quick click no need to erase or anything like that um, uh, one, one last little trick I'll, go, I'll show you here. Um, my shadows are slightly different colours. Um, so there's the uh, well, easy way to do that or to fix that. Well, there's, there's two ways I could do it. I could do it with an eyedropper tool or I could just go and grab that particular colour and uh, add that to my. Whoops. Didn't mean to do that. Um, or I could just grab that particular colour and add that to my, uh, my little uh, tool on the right. You can just pull that in like that, and then go back to the other one and grab it. So now both my shadows are the same colour. Let's blow that up so it fills the screen. And there we are, some 3D objects in iDraw using shadows and gradients and um, no, pair nodes adjusting. Hope you find that useful. If you did, please give the video a like and do subscribe for the latest um, tutorials, guides and uh, Let's Plays from the Adipose. If you've got any requests for things you'd like to see or any questions, do stick them in the comment sections and I'm more than happy to interact and uh, try and help you guys out where I can. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Bye bye.